Hello, so I'm continuing my videos on games I own that I've only played once. And next is The Lord of the Rings. I bought this one uh, in 2017. I bought it used on, uh, I think I bought it on Board Game Geek Marketplace. I won't swear to that, but I think so. Um, so it's a little rough around the edges, the box, but uh, anyway, it had all the pieces. So that's, I played it back when I got it um, in 2017. What I remember from that play is that I didn't love it, um, but I've not played it again, so I can't really give a good opinion. So I'm going to go ahead and do a setup and play this today, and uh, we'll see how it goes. Alright, first part of setup is to lay out this board, which is called the Master Board. And then it says to put the Sauron piece on uh, step 12 of the corruption line, which is this line here. It says if this is your first time playing, uh, better put it on step 15. So I will put the Sauron piece there on step 15. Then you take one of these cone markers and put it on bag end. Then you have these double-sided scenario boards, and it says to put the uh, Moria board, if I can get it. Underneath the other side of Moria is Helm's Deep, which will be next. So anyway, it says put the Moria board underneath the Master board. And you place another one of these cone markers on this space here next to the scenario headline above the event boxes. Next you place one of these markers on the first space of each activity line on this uh, Moria board. There are three of those. And they are the hiding, fighting, and traveling activity lines. All right, next you take six shields, two of value one, two value two, and two value three. And you'll shuffle them face down and just put them near the board. Like so. Next you'll place the remaining shields, the die, the heart, sun, and ring life tokens all face up next to the board. Next, you'll shuffle these event tiles, and then you'll place them in a stack face down near the board. Then you'll shuffle the Hobbit cards and place them in a deck near the board. Next, you'll sort the feature cards. Uh, by their location, so all these are Rivendell. So you'll sort them by their location and then stack them at the top of the master board near their location. So Rivendell there, Moria there, Lothlorien here, uh, Helm's Deep here, Shelob's Lair, and Mordor. And there's a different amount of cards per stack. They don't all have the same amount of cards. And then you'll place the uh, five Gandalf cards uh, side by side, just next to the board uh, somewhere. Then, the, depending on the number of players, you'll de out, deal out character cards, one to each player. I'm going to do a three-player game, so it says for three-player, use Frodo, Sam, and Pippin. So I'll deal Frodo to this player, Sam to this player, Pippin to this player. And I will not be using Mary and Fatty. If you had a four player game you'd use Mary and if you had a five player game you'd throw in Fatty. And each of the character cards has its own special ability. Then each player will take the Hobbit figure matching their color. So I got yellow for Frodo, red for Sam, and green for Pippin, and that goes on the zero space. Of the corruption line. 
Frodo starts the game as the bearer of the ring, so the Frodo player takes the ring and places it um, in his play area. Frodo always uh, begins the game first, and then the game plays in clockwise order. So that's it. We're all set up and ready to play. All right. So how do you play? Well, the first thing you do when you're starting at bag end is you do uh, this Gandalf phase or item here which is each player receives six hobbit cards remember these are the hobbit cards so I'm going to deal six to each player alright so six to each player since I'm playing solo I'll just flip them face up um, in the game you can never show this is a cooperative game so the players are playing cooperative against the uh, the, bo the board or the game I guess um, but you can't show another player your cards but you can talk about the cards that you have alright next you'll see here is this preparations phase that's a variant or uh, optional rule and not suggested for your first few games so I won't be doing that you can read about that in the manual if it interests you so then the next thing you'll do is the Nazgul ap appears item here so one player must discard two the tree represents the hide represents hide so one player um, has to discard two hide cards otherwise that symbol means the Sauron piece advances one on the corruption line so one of our players has to discard two hide cards well you'll see the cards they have these symbols up at the top so um, that's hide this is a wild card this is a fight and that's a hide so uh, Frodo here he could um, discard two hide uh, this is a wild this is friendship again hide and fight so anyway that's the next thing that happens is one player must discard uh, two hide cards or uh, Sauron will advance on the track. Alright, the next thing that happens is the this marker will advance to Rivendell and then you do these items. So the first thing you'll do is receive uh, the feature card. So you have your Riven, Rivendell feature cards and you'll deal these out to all the players with a three player game. There's 12 cards. Each player will receive four cards. And these cards are similar to the Hobbit cards, only they're usually more powerful, like they'll have two items on them. And there's some of these yellow cards, which are special cards that can be played at any time, um, not just on your turn. So you'll shuffle these up and then deal um, in a three-player game four to each player. All right, then you'll do the next item, which is Council. Each player passes one card to their left. So Frodo would pick one of the cards in his hand, pass it to Pippin. Pippin would pa pick one of the cards in his hand, pass it to Sam. And then Sam would pick one of the cards in his hand and pass it to Frodo. And then the last item here is uh, each player has to discard one Friendship card. Otherwise, you have to roll the dice. So, uh, again, if a player can't discard because they don't have a friendship card or doesn't want to, they have to roll the die, which is this die here, and it has various effects. Um, this symbol means your character advances one space towards Sauron on the uh, corruption line. This symbol means uh, discard two cards. This means nothing happens. This means you have to advance three on the corruption line. This one means Sauron advances one on the corruption line. And this one means you advance your character two on the corruption line. Now, remember, Sam has a special power that after each die roll, he suffers no more than one damage. So if he got, you know, this three 
he would not advance three on the corruption line. He would only advance one. If, same with the two, he would only advance one. And this one, he would only have to discard one card instead of two. So that's his special ability. So after all those items have been done at Rivendell, you advance the marker to Moria. And that's when you start playing the meat of the game, um, starting with the Moria board and starting with the ring bearer, which is always Frodo uh, at the beginning of the game. So what you're trying to do on this scenario board is advance this marker along this line. And when it gets to the last space um, on this line, which is the, these are the activity lines. And this one happens to be a fight activity line. Um, when the marker reaches the last space, then you've finished this uh, scenario board and you'll move on to the next scenario board, which will be Helm's Deep, and that you just flip this board over. But uh, you also need to advance on these lines because at the end of the scenario, each character needs to have at least one ring, one sun, and one heart symbol. Um, and you'll see you can only acquire those when you move along. You can only require the ring and heart. Well, you can get a ring here, but you can only require the, acquire the hearts in this hide um, activity line, and you can only acquire the sun in this um, travel activity line. Now, you can still finish the scenario um, if all the characters don't each have... Um, a ring, a sun, and a heart, but there's a penalty for those characters that don't have all those. But we'll get to that shortly. So, first thing that happens uh, once you start, uh, the ring bearer will take his turn, and when you do that, the first thing he'll do is draw an event tile. And when you reveal the event tile, you put it in your play area and carry out its effect. Now, um, if it is one of the um, if it's one of the activity symbols, you know the tree uh, for hiding, the sword and axe for fighting, the uh, feet for traveling, and then there's also uh, there's not an activity line for uh, friendship on this board, but still, if you draw one of the friendship tiles. Um, then that, that's considered one of the activity tiles. If you don't draw one of those and you, whatever other tile you draw, that's going to usually be a negative event. You have to carry that out and then draw another tile. And you have to keep doing that until you draw a tile that is one of the activity tiles. So, for example, you know, Frodo's turn, he's going to turn over this one where he gets an activity tile. So, what you'll do when you draw that tile is you advance the marker on the matching activity line and then this means collect one uh, one value shield so Frodo would get to collect a one value shield and put it in his play area. Now he has the option to play um, one or two cards. If you play you can play two cards if you play uh, both a white and a gray card so uh, Frodo, if Frodo wanted to play a white and a gray card, he could play two cards. Otherwise, if you just play, um, if you don't have two different color cards, like if you just have two whites or all white cards, then you can only play one card. Or just if your choice, even if you do have a white and a gray, if you only want to play one card, you just play one. So to play it, um, if you wanted to play, if you want to advance on, on this marker on this hiding track, you would discard one um, you could discard this card with the hiding symbol advance on this track and then when you advance on the track you just carry out um, whatever it landed on so in this case it lands on the book so that would allow you to take the book card from the Moria um, stack up here and put it into your hand when you advance you know, and you land it on the ring, then you'd get to take a ring token. If you land on the heart, you get to take um, one of the heart tokens and so forth. Uh, again, when you land on one of these shields, that lets you take a one value shield into your play area. 
If you land on the sun, you get to take a sun token. But again, to actually complete the scenario, you want to advance to the end of this activity line. And this symbol, again, means roll the dice, so whichever player um, causes the pawn to land on that symbol has to roll the dice and take the effects. So we'll just say, for example, if Frodo hadn't drawn that for his first tile, if he had drawn, well, <laughs> we're getting lucky in getting the activity symbols. They all showed up at the beginning. Lord, well, this is a bad example. Good grief. I mean, that would be good for the players. Okay, so here, uh, if, if Frodo had drawn this tile, that's an event symbol. So that means you advance the marker on the event track and carry out whatever uh, it says. So if, if Frodo drew this, he would have to move the event marker to the first event, which says the, groups, the group has to discard a friendship and a wild. Or in this game, I think they actually call it a joker. The star is a joker, but it's a wild. So anyway, the group has to discard a friendship and a and a joker otherwise Sauron advances so amongst the players they would decide you know if um, together they discard one friendship and one joker and if not Sauron would advance and then because he did not because Frodo um, drew an event because he drew an event and did not draw an activity symbol, you know, one of these, which is, you know, one of the symbols to move a line, um, he doesn't then get to play cards. He then has to um, draw another event tile. So in this case, he got the friendship. So when um, he would get to move one of these. Now, you'll notice that the friendship is not one of the activity lines on the board, but if you draw an event tile, that has an activity that is not on the board then you just choose one of the other um, activity lines of your choice and advance that and then um, because you did draw something an activity tile and not an event or other tile then you can quit drawing event tiles and again play one or two one or two cards but in the <laughs> if you do have the bad luck of drawing something well I keep having good luck I wish I had that luck when I played it okay so if he had drawn the event tile and then you know moved the event marker and so because it's not one of the activity tiles he has to draw another one so he gets this one which causes the ring bearer to advance one on the uh, corruption line and Frodo happens to be the ring bearer so he would have to move his hobbit up one on the corruption line and again since he did not draw one of the activity tiles he again has to draw another and you know so then he got another event and he would have to move the event marker down and do the next, do the next event so you do that, you have to keep drawing event tiles, carrying out their effects until you draw one of the um, activity tiles. And then once you've drawn one of those, then you can play one or two cards. Once you've done that, then that's the end of your turn. It goes to the next player on your right, which would be Pippin in this case. And then he would start by drawing event tiles and it continues like that. So examples of some event tiles we didn't see are here. So in this case, um, the players have the option to, if you drew this tile, the players have the option to discard as a group three cards, you know, however they want to do it. One player can do all three or they can each discard one, however. As long as the group discards three, three cards, then the event marker doesn't move. Um, otherwise, the event marker would have to move. And even if you pay the three cards um, and so you don't have to do the event, you still would have to draw another uh, event tile. You only don't draw another event tile if you actually draw one of the activity tiles. All right, this one, if you draw this, you can take your choice of either moving Sauron one on the uh, one down on the corruption line or you have to... Uh, move your character up to on the corruption line. And finally, if you draw this one as a group, 
if you discard um, one card, one shield, and one of these life tokens, uh, either a ring or a sun or a heart, then you can ignore this and you don't have to advance the event marker. Um, otherwise you do advance the event the event marker and carry out the event and in any case whether you ignore it or do it then you have to draw the next event tile again until you get one of the activity tiles and so you'll continue taking turns um, in this scenario until uh, either as I said before the uh, this marker on this scenario uh, the fight marker reaches the last um, spot here and you'll notice that that spot it has the larger shield so if you when you land on that spot you get to choose from one of these tiles we set aside at the beginning remember two of them are a one uh, two of them are a two and two of them are a three but if the marker reaches that last spot then you end the scenario this scenario the moria scenario or the other thing that will end the scenario is if you uh, do the last event if you move the event marker down and end up doing the last event that also ends the scenario so as I mentioned earlier when the scenario ends each player should have a heart a sun and a ring token the heart is supposed to show that your heart is in the right place the ring is the rings to show you haven't given in to the corruption of the ring and the sun shows that the darkness has not overtaken you so hopefully each player has has all three of those for any player that doesn't have all three for each token you don't have um, you have to move your hobbit one step along the corruption line then whoever has the most uh, ring tokens becomes the ring the, the next ring bearer um, if there's a tie then it's the person uh, s sitting the next in clockwise order from the current ring bearer um, between the tied players the only way the current ring bearer can um, keep being the ring bearer is if they had more rings than uh, anybody else and then so the next thing that would happen is up on the master board you would move the token to the Lothlorien and then carry out these steps so receive the uh, feature cards for Lothlorien which would be this deck and deal those out to the players again in a three player game like I'm playing that would be four cards to each player then you would do this step um, each player may discard two shields to either draw two hobbit cards or advance one step backward toward the light. And then last, the test of Galadriel. Each player has to discard a joker, otherwise roll the die and take the effects. Then once you've completed uh, everything in Lothlorien, you advance the marker to Helm's Deep. And at that point you would flip this board over like so now you're on the helms deep side put the markers at the beginning of each of the activity lines again to finish the helms deep scenario you want to move the fighting uh, sorry that should be the fighting uh, token along down to here but you've also got your uh, other activity friendship activity track and uh, travel activity track and your event track so you'll continue playing in this fashion, you know, hopefully completing this scenario, moving on to the next scenario, which is the Shelob's Lair. And if you make it past Shelob's Lair, then you finally get to the Mordor board. Now we hadn't talked about these Gandalf cards. At uh, any time um, during the game, a player can discard five shields, so that's, you know, a good reason for collecting them. Um, a player can discard five shields and choose one of these Gandalf cards and then its effect takes takes place immediately. So if somebody um, you know said I want to get this Gandalf card they would discard five shields and then they can choose one player 
and actually it's the active player who chooses um, the use of the card so if if someone who's not the active player decides they're going to pay um, you know the five shields to to choose a card um, it's actually the active player that decides the effect or who the effect goes on but surely that's going to be discussed among the players so again at, at any time um, a player can discard five shields to grab one of these uh, Gandalf cards and it never goes into your hand its effect is immediate and then the other yellow cards I think that we've discussed before that you can get from uh, the uh, cards up there um, the feature cards they're yellow um, again they can be played at any time also for instance this player if now these will go into your hand remember they're dealt to you at certain times or you pick them up um, from tracks along the board but for instance this one one player ignores the effects after one die roll so again that doesn't have to be you if if another player is doing their die roll you can play this at any time and, and let them ignore those effects so uh, again that's the the yellow cards so how do you get eliminated from the game well if at any point your hobbit is on the same space or further along the corruption line as Sauron then you are immediately eliminated from the game and at that point you know you'll remove your character discard all your cards discard all your life tokens you do keep your shields for possible scoring at the end if the ring bearers hobbit is ever eliminated then the players just lose immediately at that point if a, a player is eliminated that is not the ring bearer then the remaining players can continue to uh, play the game another way you can get eliminated from the game is if you are required an effect requires you to discard um, items like shields or certain type of cards or, or something and you do not have those um, you do not have what's required for you to discard then you are immediately eliminated from the game um, so the same as long as it's not the ring bearer that's eliminated in that way you can keep playing the other players can keep playing um, if it is the ring bearer then the players immediately lose so to win the game in Mordor on the Mordor scenario board the players have to make it all the way to the end um, of this activity line and of course the last uh, symbol in the activity line is to um, roll the die if uh, after that die roll the players are uh, the players or more specifically the ring bearer is not eliminated then you place the ring on uh, the volcano here and roll the die one more time um, nobody is the ring bearer at this point if the active play the active player will roll the die one more time if uh, whatever the result is still keeps him from being eliminated he is not eliminated from that die roll then the players have destroyed the ring if uh, if that player is eliminated after that die roll then the die is packs passed to the next player who in turn attempts to destroy the ring by by rolling the die and then so they'll roll the die if they're not eliminated then the players have won the game if they're if they are eliminated from that die roll then they pass to the next player if there's still one and so forth until either the ring is destroyed or the players fail at destroying the ring so if you're successful in joint in destroying the ring i mean you've basically won the game but uh, you can kind of keep track to see if you got a, a better score. So if you destroyed the ring, you get 60 points, plus you add up the total of all the shields that the players contain. So 60 points plus the total number of shields, and that's the total score you got for that uh, game. If you make it to the uh, end of the Mordor, but you and you get to where you're trying to destroy the ring you've put the ring on Mount Doom but you fail to destroy it 
then your score is just 60 points. You don't get to add your shields in. And if at any point before reaching the end of the activity line in Mordor, the ring bearer is eliminated, as I said, the players lose the game, but you still score depending on where uh, you are. Like if you if your uh, marker was on this space uh, on on this activity line, then the score for the group for that game would be 37. You don't get to add your shields. The only time you get to add in your shields is if you successfully destroy the ring. And uh, the game includes a little Hall of Fame sheet that you can record your scores on. You know, it's got the date and so forth. So if you care about uh, keeping the scores, that, <laughs> that really doesn't matter to me. I would just care whether we won the game or not. So that's it. I think I've pretty well explained how the game plays. Uh, we'll go through a few example turns and then we'll wrap it up. All right, we'll do a few example turns. So... Uh, Frodo's the ring bearer. Um, anyway, first thing as we uh, saw earlier is we're in bag end and we do the Gandalf step so each player will receive six Hobbit cards. I've got the cards face up for each player just since I'm playing solo. Um, as I said in my rules explanation, you never show uh, the other players your cards. You can talk about them. All right, again, we're skipping the preparation because that's a variant or an optional rule. So now one player will have to discard two hiding um, cards. So that can be Frodo. He's got two. Sam does not have two. And Pippin does not have two. So uh, that's got to be Frodo that discards two hiding cards. So we'll put those in our discard pile. And... Um, so since we were able to do that, Sauron does not advance. All right, so now we go to Rivendell. We go to that Elrond step. So we receive the feature card. So we're going to shuffle up these Rivendell cards and deal them out to the players. All right, so I've done that. You see uh, Frodo got Mithril and uh, Miruvor. I'm not sure what that is. And Boromir and Legolas. Sam got Glamdring, Athalos, Staff, and Andril, and and Andril, and Pippin got Gimli, Aragorn, Gandalf, and Sting. Those were the cards he got from Rivendell. All right, now we go to the next thing. Each player passes one card um, to their left. So Frodo. I'll just say he's going to pass this uh, travel card to his left, which would be to Pippin. Pippin, we'll say he's going to pass a hiding to Sam, and Sam will pass a, a fight to Frodo. So we finish that step. Now each player has to discard a friendship or roll the dice. So let's see what we got. All right, well, Frodo does not have a friendship card, so he's just going to have to roll the dice. So he's going to get the dice, roll it. Oh, he's got to take three. Um, he he have to move three along the track, but he does have uh, Mithril, which he can play. One player ignore effects after one die roll. So he's going to play that. That just goes into our discard pile, and he'll ignore those effects. Now, Pippin does have a friendship card, so he's going to discard that. And Sam does have a friendship card, so he's going to discard that. All right, so that takes care of the fellowship step. So now we move to the Moria step, and we start with Frodo, as he's the ring bearer, so he's first. So first thing he does is draw an event tile. And he got an event, so we have to move the event marker, speak friend and enter. The group uh, discards one friendship and one joker. Well, nobody has a friendship card, and I actually probably could have used this power. <laughs> I forgot about this um, previously when I needed a friendship. Frodo has a power where any white hobbit card... Uh, acts as a joker or a wild so um, he can just uh, 
play any of his white car any of his white hobbit cards now it can't be one of the uh you know it couldn't be like a legless it can't be one of the feature cards but anyway so since he has that power any white hobbit card is a uh, is a wild so he's going to play this as um the friendship card that the group has to discard so then we just need one other joker card and sam has one so he's going to play a joker card so we uh do not have to advance the sauron marker all right so because frodo didn't draw a activity tile we now have to he has to draw another event tile and dang he got another event so that's no good we move down here, Watcher in the Water. Each player discards a hiding, otherwise they have to roll a dice. Well, the only hiding Frodo has is this one. He doesn't want to waste uh, that double hiding. Um, but again, he does have that power where he can make any white card a wild. So he's going to uh, make this uh, white Hobbit card a hiding card make it use it as a wild so he doesn't have to roll the dice so let's see what Pippin has uh, Pippin doesn't have a hiding card but he does have a wild a joker so he's gonna discard that as a hiding card so he doesn't have to roll the dice and let's see but all Sam well Sam has one he's got a hiding card so he'll discard that so there we go he, nobody has to roll the dice all right, well, Frodo's uh, still got to draw another event tile because he hasn't got an activity tile yet. So, oh, man, he's just having bad luck. See, in my rules explanation, I was having great luck. Anyway, the ring bearer has to advance on the track. That's Frodo the yellow. And again, he has to draw another uh, event tile. Finally, finally we got an activity tile, the hiding. So we move that. And that lands on the book, so Frodo gets to get the book up here from the feature card in uh, Moria, and that goes into his hand. And now, he gets to quit drawing event tiles, and now he can play uh, one or two cards. So he's going to play a white card, this Legolas card that lets him move uh, two on the uh, this activity line. Actually, we just put that in our play area. So one, two, so he gets a ring and a heart, so that's good. So he just puts those in his play area. And now since he played a white card, if he wants to, he can play a gray card, but he doesn't want to play that he's already got a ring. Um, I mean, it's good to get another ring so you can stay the ring bearer, but he might want to leave that for somebody else. See what other gray card. He's got this gray card. And we need to advance the fighting track to get out of the scenario. So he's going to play this gray card and advance here, which lets him get one shield. So he's done. So now the cards he played go into the discard pile and the event tiles that he played um, go here. Now I don't think I mentioned um, cards um, in your hand that... Um, are not uh, like if we had any friendship cards because there's no friendship activity line they're no good for playing to move uh, on an activity line so I don't think I mentioned that and these event tiles when we get to a new scenario all the event tiles are shuffled and a new stack is formed I don't think I mentioned that in my rules either but anyway Frodo's done so now we move on to Pippin's turn we haven't talked about Pippin's special power. On his turn, he can play any two cards, so he doesn't have to play a gray and a white. He can just play two gray, two white, a gray and a white. Um, that's his power. But anyway, the first thing he has to do is draw an event tile. So he draws, oh, good, he got an activity tile, so that's good. So he moves along this track, that lets him get, get a shield. Put it in his play area since he drew an activity tile right off the bat we don't have to draw any more event tiles now he just gets to go where he's going to play one or two cards um so let's see he's going to play a gray card to move on the uh flee to the exit of moria the travel activity track that gets him another shield And. 
And now he could play a white card if he wishes. And I think he will because he wants to get a sun. There's, that's the only place you can get the suns on this uh, scenario. So he's going to play another white travel card. Move on to the sun spot. And he gets to take a sun life token. Puts that in his play area. Now he's done. He's played his two cards. These go into the discard pile. And the activity or the event tile he draw, drew is there. And now we move on to Sam. Alright, Sam's got to draw an event tile. So he draws. Oh, great. He got an activity tile too. So that's good. So that moves this along the track. He gets a ring. That's helpful. And uh, now he can go. He doesn't, since he drew an activity tile, he doesn't have to draw any more event tiles. So he goes to the playing cards. Uh, well, let's see. He'd like to get a heart. He's got a ring, so he's going to play a white card. And a white hiding card, so he moves along this track. That lets him get a heart. And that's a white card, so he can play a gray card. I think he wants to move, move the group along here, so he's going to play this glam dream gray card and it's got two jokers you have you can't use one for one activity line and one for the other activity line they both have to be the same so he's going to play them as the fighting symbol and move that twice so he's going to get a shield and a ring there's a shield and a ring now he already had a ring but remember whoever has the most rings becomes the ring bearer and that's it he's played his two cards so we'll put those in the discard pile put this here and now we're back to Frodo all right we'll we'll do one more round so all right Frodo it's his turn he draws an event tile oh dang got another event all right so we got to move this stone in the whale reveal one hobbit card from the deck and active player discard two matching card symbols to receive the pipe card which is up here um, Otherwise, Sauron advances and next event. Oh, that's no good. All right, so we got to reveal one Hobbit card. And now the active player, which is Frodo, um, has to discard two matching cards. Well, he's got one matching, and again, his power lets him uh, use any white card. White Hobbit card is a wild, so he will use both of those. Um, so we don't have to and that allows him to receive the pipe card and we don't have to go on to the next event but um, because he drew an event not an activity he does have to draw another tile luckily he gets an activity tile which is the hiding so he moves along here gets a ring and now he can play two cards now this pipe really doesn't do him any good on this uh, Moria scenario board because there's no friendship track. But uh, I think he will play this white card to move two on the uh, fight activity track. So one, two, so he gets two shields. So he can just take a number two that stands for two shields. And um, so he played this. And that's about all he can do. So he's going to discard that. Discard these two event tiles he played. And that's the end of his turn. Now, oh, one thing I, I forgot, and I didn't mention, mention this in the rules. You can choose on your turn, um, if you choose not to play a card, you can uh, either draw two Hobbit cards or move yourself back one step on the track. I'll have to go back and put a, a note on that in the rules. Um, anyway, Frodo's done, so we're on to Pippin. He's only got a son. He needs a heart, so he kind of wants a hiding, which he doesn't have. He does have this wild, so he's gonna he's gonna play a gray as a as a hiding. So he's gonna move this. That'll get him a heart, and so he could still play a white card and uh gosh i guess all right 
he will play this Gimli, which is going to move the fight two. So one, two. So he's landed on the dice, but before he rolls the dice, he gets the ring. So he gets to take a ring token. So he's going to be good. He's got all three. But now he does have to roll the dice. And he gets a two. Um, and he's green, so he moves two up on the corruption track. And uh, that's going to be his turn. So he's got. Oh, we forgot he had to draw a vent tile. Oh, Lord, I forgot that. All right, hold on. He's got to do that. He should have done that before he played cards. Well, luckily. <laughs> Luckily, he got this, so, all right, he would move there, he'd get a shield, all right, then he would play his cards, and discard, and finally, we're back to Sam. Now, Sam doesn't have a son, he needs a son, oh, let's not forget, he's got to draw his event tile, oh, an event, damn. All right, we got to move to the next event. Traveling and hiding must be complete. Well, uh, hiding is complete, but traveling is not. So otherwise, Sauron advances two, and the ring bearer has to roll the dice. So let's see if we got a card to block that. Um, ignore one tile showing up. One player ignore any effects of a missing life token. No. All right, so we got to do that. So. Sauron advances two, and Frodo has to roll the die. So, dang, Sauron, Sauron advances another one. All right, because Sam drew a uh, sundial event, he's got to draw another event tile. Okay, good. He got an activity tile. So, uh, he advances this, and that gets him the sun, which he needed. So he's got all three, so he'll be good when the scenario ends. And now he can play two cards. Um, so he'll play a gray uh, and move the fighting along two, one, two. So he gets a shield first, but now he's got to roll the dice. Oh, good, he got a nothing happens. That's great. And he could still play a white card. Um, so let's just say he's going to do that. He's going to play a white card, which advances this. So that gets him another shield. And that'll give him three. So he's just going to trade these in and get a three. And uh, that's it. He's got a... Um, these are the cards he played. So they get discarded. And the tiles he drew are here. So, <clears throat> anyway, then it would be Frodo's turn again. So, as you can see, we would keep going. We're almost at the end of the scenario. We would probably end the scenario at this point. Um, I guess let's go ahead and continue just so we can end the scenario and, and see how that works. All right, so it's Frodo's turn again. He's got to draw a tile. Oh, no. We got this one. But didn't somebody have an event card? Ignore one tile showing a sundial and three items. So Sam's going to play that. So we get to ignore this. But we do still have to draw another one. Oh, no, another event. Frodo has the worst luck. Orcs attack. Group discards five fight cards. Other. All right, we got this. So the group's got to discard five total fight. I don't have any there. I don't have any there. This could be two, three. Uh, we don't have it. All right, dang, Sauron's going to advance two. That's terrible. And Frodo's got to draw another event tile. Uh, luckily, we got a fight. Okay, well, that's good. That's going to take us to the end. Um, now Frodo gets to choose one of these. Hopefully he gets a three. No, he got a two. But still, that's not bad. He's got five now, so he would be able to get a Gandalf card. But anyway, that immediately ends the scenario. So now we check. Um, Frodo does not have the sun, so unfortunately he's got to move one along the track. 
uh, Pippin has all three and Sam has all three. Now actually somebody had a card where they could have uh, we could have let played that so Frodo could ignore the effect of uh, moving but I'm gonna save that. Um, Alright so we're done with that part. Now whoever has the most rings becomes the new ring bearer where Frodo's only has got two, Sam's got two, and Pippin only has one. Well there's a tie and the ring bearer can only continue to be the ring bearer if they uh, um, have the most rings. So since they don't, it goes to the next tied player uh, in clockwise order. So Sam is going to end up being the ring bearer. Now all these tokens go back. And uh, I just thought of another thing I forgot to explain in the rules explanation. Uh, the power of the ring. So once during each scenario, um, either after an event tile is revealed or after a card is played or an event's acted on, the ring bearer can use the ring. Um, they put it over, well in this case Sam's the ring bearer put it over their player to show they've used it for that scenario then they have to roll the dice and take whatever effect it is so in this case discard uh, two cards but then you get to move any marker on one of the activity lines your choice um, a number of spaces four minus the number of symbols so in this case four minus two symbols that were shown you could move uh, any activity line um, two spaces forward. If you'd rolled a one, uh, you rolled this, then you could move one of the markers three. Now, of course, this is during the scenario, not when the scenario has ended like this, but I just forgot to explain that uh, in the rules explanation. I'll probably go back and put an annotation. So the next thing that happens, we move to Lost Lorien. Um, we would do these, and flip the board over, and start uh, a new scenario. So that's it. That's how the game plays. That should give you a pretty good idea. Um, so I did play it again yesterday, so that's my second play of it. I think I enjoyed it more uh, yesterday than I did um, from what I remember from my first play. Again, it's another game. I say this almost every time that it would probably be a lot more fun playing it with other players than uh, than by yourself but um, it's no war of the ring <laughs> I'll just say that I mean it's okay but as far as uh, Lord of the Rings games goes War of the Ring you know blows this away of course it's a much uh, deeper uh, in more in-depth game than this um, but this is okay I, I think it's kind of a uh, enjoyable it's older I mean I, I know there's been I think one or two other newer versions of this um, but I think from what I've seen um, people talking about it they prefer uh, this original version from 2000 than to the either of the other newer versions but I may be crazy and not knowing what I'm talking about but anyway I uh, better wrap this up thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed it